Do you own a reverb pedal with a 2.5 mil barrel jack? Do you struggle to know when to invert the polarity on your DC cables? Do you have one of those little pointy headphone jack things that stick into your overdrive pedal and they're really hard to know how to power? You are not alone. If you've ever had questions around how to power your pedals, you are not alone. It is confusing. What does milliamps mean? What voltage should you feed your pedals? What happens if the barrel doesn't quite fit in the pedal that you're trying to power? The pin's too big. There are tons of questions around powering your pedals, and today we are going to cover some of the most common. If we're going to talk powering your pedals, we need to talk about power supply types. There are two main types of power supplies, toroidal and switch mode. Switch mode power supplies have a bad rap for being noisy, adding noise into your signal path on your rig. It simply is not the case. If you buy a good quality switch mode power supply, you will be fine. If you buy a low quality one that's quite cheap, you will probably notice issues with noise leaking into the signal path of your rig. Another common switch mode power supply is the infamous wall wart. Wall warts plug into the socket on your wall and they have one outlet. And from there you power multiple pedals with a daisy chain. This is great if you're running just a couple of analog pedals, but as soon as you get into the digital world, you will probably start noticing noise being added into your rig. So get a great switch mode power supply if this is the way you wanna go with isolated outputs and you will be fine. The other type of power supply is a toroidal transformer isolated supply. They have a toroidal transformer inside, which is literally just referencing the shape of the transformer, which looks like this, which as you can see is shaped just like my dinner last night. Delicious. Toroidal transformers are great. They do a great job of giving you clean, noise-free power. However, the downside is they are heavy. Something like a Voodoo Labs Pedal Power 2 Plus, an industry standard for power supplies, is great, but it is heavier than something like a Strymon Zuma, which has high output on each of its individual isolated outputs, but is also about a third of the weight. So there are lots of things you need to consider when choosing a power supply. The main thing I would honestly look into for this is does it have enough milliamps per outlet? Does it have enough outlets? And can you plug it in anywhere in the world? Something like the Strymon Zuma, you can plug into in any country and it will automatically convert the mains voltage into something usable for your pedal board without any worry about blowing up your power supply from supplying it the wrong voltage. No matter what power supply you get, just make sure the specs suit your needs, which we are about to get into a little bit further. Now that we've talked about the two different types of power supplies, toroidal and switch mode, now we can move on to the individual outlets on that power supply. From here on out in this video, we are going to assume that your power supply is isolated or the individual outlets are not related to each other, they can't see each other, they send isolated power out each outlet. Each outlet will have a V or a voltage amount and it will have a specified amount of current that it can supply. An example might be nine volts and 250 milliamps. If you want a metaphor, which I think you do, for the difference between voltage and milliamps or current, it would be this. You drive home from work, you pull up to your place, and you see just the corner of an envelope sticking out of your mailbox. You go and check the mail, Turns out it's from an unidentified sender. Mysterious. You walk to your front door, grab your keys, unlock it and walk inside. Open up the envelope and it turns out to be a letter from the best Avenger, the Hulk. The Hulk has invited you over for dinner. More specifically, he's invited you to cook him dinner. 
You know from all the forums that the Hulk needs to eat at nine spoonfuls of food per minute or else he gets angry and he will destroy your house. The Hulk also eats 300 pounds of food per sitting. So you now know that you need to make sure the Hulk eats at a specific rate and he has to have 300 pounds of food or your house is destroyed. What are you gonna do? You already know you're gonna cook a meatloaf, no brainer. So what you need to do is sit down at the table with the Hulk, slow him down if he eats a little bit too quick, speed him up if he eats a little bit too slow, and you wanna make sure he has more than 300 pounds of food on the table. The rate at which the Hulk eats is voltage. The amount the Hulk needs to eat is current or milliamps on your power supply. You can put 600 pounds of food on the table, the Hulk is only gonna eat 300. It doesn't matter if you give him too much, it does matter if you don't give him enough. That is current. This is another way of saying you can put a pedal that only requires 10 milliamps on an outlet that supplies 500. It doesn't matter if you oversupply it with milliamps. It does matter if you oversupply with voltage. So if you let the Hulk eat too much in that one minute space, he is gonna get bloated, gassy, who knows? And he's gonna destroy your house. In this instance, if you put 18 volts into a pedal that needs nine, you are going to damage the pedal. Only supply in voltage what the pedal requires. You can oversupply in current and it won't make a difference. That is voltage and current. One of the perks as well to toroidal transformer power supplies is that rating on the outlet, let's say it's 250 milliamps, is a bit more forgiving than switch mode power supplies. This means if your pedal takes 300 milliamps to power and you only have a 250 milliamp outlet left, chances are you're gonna be okay to plug it in. Another perk to some of these modern isolated power supplies is what is called sag. On certain outlets of your power supply, you may notice a trim pot, and that actually allows you to reduce the voltage being fed to your pedal. Why would you wanna feed five volts to a pedal that requires nine? On certain overdrives and vintage fuzz pedals, they like to see batteries. And so when a battery gets old, the voltage drops and then changes the sound of that pedal. So you can simulate this with the sag feature. Do not use this on digital pedals, however, as they like to see consistent voltage. The other thing we need to talk about after this, voltage, current, or milliamps on your power supply, is we need to talk about polarity. Most pedals these days take a barrel plug that is center negative. That means the negative part of that DC power is going to be on the center of that plug. If you have something like a even tied H9, those are center positive. That means that the center is now gonna take the positive rail of the DC voltage. All of this, the current draw, the voltage, and the polarity are in the user manual of your pedal. If it's not, if you get one of those messages saying brand name power supply only recommended and they don't actually give you any specs on power, go to Google. Type in your pedal, let's say it's even tied H9 and current draw and that will then give you the current draw for that pedal. Type in that pedal and say voltage required and it will tell you what voltage is required. Something like an even tight H9 is actually 12 volts. So you need to know some specifics. If I have any unknown pedals, if I'm doing a setup for someone and I have a pedal I'm not familiar with, I go straight to Google, double check the user manual or double check online and I will make sure I know exactly what that pedal needs to be powered correctly. Another common question that comes up every week is how do I power my 18 volt pedal? Let's say on your power supply you have two 9 volt taps left, both have 250 milliamps available. How are you going to get 18 volts to your pedal? you need a voltage doubler. 
A voltage doubler will double the voltage of those two outlets, so you'll now have 18 volts, but the current will stay exactly the same. So you now have 18 volts at 250 milliamps. This is a very easy thing to do if you have pedals that need specific voltages that are higher than what is on your power supply. These are also available on our website under our DC cable builder. I'll put the link below. There's another common one. What if you have a nine volt pedal that takes a thousand milliamps? You can take two unused 500 milliamp outlets on your supply. Both need to be at nine volts in this example, and you can use a current doubler. You guessed it, you're smart. This is where you double the current, but the voltage stays the same. Again, available on our site. So keep in mind, what does my pedal need? What do I have available on my power supply? And will doubling the voltage or doubling the current on any of these two outlets actually work for my needs? The last thing we need to talk about in powering your pedals is the different DC connectors you're going to use for your pedals. There are three main types we'll cover today. The first one and the most common is a 2.1 millimeter barrel. Very similarly to this is a 2.5 mil barrel. And that is something that you'll find on an Eventide H9 as an example. It's basically just a slightly bigger pin and often will come with reverse polarity, meaning it's center positive. The obvious rule breaker to this is the HX Stomp by Line 6, which is a 2.5 mil barrel, center negative. So again, check your owner's manual and make sure you're giving it the power it needs. The third one we're going to talk about is something you'll find on TS-808s, an Ibanez Overdrive, or an old Klon, or a Rat. These are something that look like a headphone jack, a 3.5 millimeter jack. These are often center positive, but again, check your owner's manual to make sure you have it. If you don't do your homework and check these specs properly, voltage, current draw, and polarity, you can often damage your pedals from a rookie mistake. The last thing you wanna do is go to the manufacturer and say, plugged in the wrong power and damaged the pedal. Just check online and make sure you have the right specs for your pedal. So, Today we covered the different types of power supplies, the barrel types, the voltage and current doublers, and how to find out that information. Powering your pedals is not the most exciting topic, but it's important. You need good, clean, quiet power so that your rig is only making noise when you want it to. Put your questions below. We'll see you next week.